May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. March 12, 2024, Tuesday of the fourth week of Lent. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And he turned me back to the gate of the house. And behold, waters went out from under the threshold of the house toward the east. For the face of the house looked toward the east. But the waters descended on the right side of the temple toward the south of the altar. And he led me out along the way of the north gate and he turned me back toward the way outside the exterior gate, the way which looked toward the east. And behold, the waters overflowed on the right side. Then the man who held the rope in his hand departed toward the east, and he measured one thousand cubits. And he led me forward, through the water, up to the ankles. And again he measured one thousand, and he led me forward, through the water, up to the knees. And he measured one thousand, and he led me forward, through the water, up to the waist. And he measured one thousand, into a torrent, through which I was not able to pass. For the waters had risen to become a profound torrent, which was not able to be crossed. And he said to me, Son of man, certainly you have seen. And he led me out, and he turned me back to the bank of the torrent. And when I had turned myself around, behold, on the bank of the torrent, there were very many trees on both sides. And he said to me, These waters, which go forth toward the hillocks of sand to the east, and which descend to the plains of the desert, will enter the sea, and will go out, and the waters will be healed. And every living soul that moves, wherever the torrent arrives, will live. And there will be more than enough fish, after these waters have arrived there, and they will be healed. And all things will live where the torrent arrives. And above the torrent on its banks on both sides, every kind of fruit tree will rise up. Their foliage will not fall away, and their fruit will not fail. Every single month they will bring forth first fruits. For its waters will go forth from the sanctuary and its fruits will be for food, and its leaves will be for medicine. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Our God is our refuge and strength, a helper in troubles, which have found us exceedingly. Therefore we will not fear, when the earth shall be troubled, and the mountains shall be removed into the heart of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The stream of the river makes the city of God joyful, the Most High has sanctified his own tabernacle. God is in the midst thereof, it shall not be moved, God will help it in the morning early. The Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of armies is with us, the God of Jacob is our protector. Come and behold the works of the Lord, what wonders he has done upon earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After these things, there was a feast day of the Jews, and so Jesus ascended to Jerusalem. Now at Jerusalem is the Pool of Evidence, which in Hebrew is known as the Place of Mercy, it has five porticos. Along these lay a great multitude of the sick, the blind, the lame, and the withered, waiting for the movement of the water. Now at times an angel of the Lord would descend into the pool, and so the water was moved. And whoever descended first into the pool, after the motion of the water, he was healed of whatever infirmity held him. And there was a certain man in that place, having been in his infirmity for thirty-eight years. 
Then, when Jesus had seen him reclining, and when he realized that he had been afflicted for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The invalid answered him, Lord, I do not have any man to put me in the pool, when the water has been stirred. For as I am going, another descends ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your stretcher, and walk. And immediately the man was healed. And he took up his stretcher and walked. Now this day was the Sabbath. Therefore, the Jew said to the one who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to take up your stretcher. He answered them, The one who healed me, he said to me, Take up your stretcher and walk. Therefore, they questioned him, Who is that man, who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who had been given health did not know who it was. For Jesus had turned aside from the crowd gathered in that place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple, and he said to him, Behold, you have been healed. Do not choose to sin further, otherwise something worse may happen to you. This man went away, and he reported to the Jews that it was Jesus who had given him health. Because of this, the Jews were persecuting Jesus, for he was doing these things on the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can we cultivate patient endurance in the face of trials, maintaining hope and joy, despite ongoing challenges? 1 man was there, who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? John 5 verses 5 to 6 Only those who have been crippled for many years could understand what this man endured in life. He was crippled and unable to walk for 38 years. The pool he was laying next to was believed to have the power of healing. Therefore, many who were sick and crippled would sit by the pool and try to be the first to enter it, when the waters were stirred up. From time to time, that person was said to have received healing. Jesus sees this man and clearly perceives his desire for healing after so many years. Most likely, his desire for healing was the dominant desire in his life. Without the ability to walk, he could not work and provide for himself. He would have had to rely upon begging and the generosity of others. Thinking about this man, his sufferings, and his ongoing attempts for healing from this pool should move any heart to compassion. And since Jesus' heart was one that was full of compassion, he was moved to offer this man not only the healing he so deeply desired, but so much more. One virtue in the heart of this man that would have especially moved Jesus to compassion is the virtue of patient endurance. This virtue is an ability to have hope in the midst of some ongoing and lengthy trial. It is also referred to as long-suffering or longanimity. Usually, when one faces a difficulty, the immediate reaction is to look for a way out. As time moves on and that difficulty is not removed, it's easy to fall into discouragement and even despair. Patient endurance is the cure for this temptation. When one can patiently endure anything and everything they suffer in life, there is a spiritual strength within them that benefits them in numerous ways. Other little challenges are more easily endured. Hope is born within them to a powerful degree. Even joy comes with this virtue despite the ongoing struggle. When Jesus saw this virtue alive in this man, he was moved to reach out and heal him. And the primary reason Jesus healed this man was not just to help him physically, but so that the man would come to believe in Jesus and follow him. Reflect today upon this beautiful virtue of patient endurance. 
The trials of life should ideally be seen not in a negative way, but as an invitation to patient endurance. Ponder the way you endure your own trials. Is it with deep and ongoing patience, hope, and joy? Or is it with anger, bitterness, and despair? Pray for the gift of this virtue and seek to imitate this crippled man. Let us pray. My Lord of all hope, you endured so much in life and persevered through it all in perfect obedience to the will of the Father. Give me strength in the midst of the trials of life so that I can grow strong in the hope and the joy that comes with that strength. May I turn away from sin and turn to you in complete trust. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.